Hi everyone, today we're back for a video on Oxygen Not Included and we'll see the full Rodriguez. So I did a previous video on the half Rodriguez so that uh, version will be able to produce more oxygen and more hydrogen. One more time this design is well known within the community and it's not coming from me. So with that being said, let's get started. We can notice that it is similar to the half Rodriguez. We can see that we have four electrolyzers here that will produce oxygen and hydrogen and they are separated by a manual airlock and tiles. We can see that they are built as well on airflow tiles that way the, the oxygen can go down and the hydrogen is going to go up over the manual airlock and is going to stay here and the oxygen will not be able to go in that area because there is tiles here so the oxygen cannot go up that way and there are manual airlocks here so it cannot go to the left or if it is from here to the right when it's just being produced by the electrolyzer. The next thing to discuss about are these gas pumps at the bottom of the room and we can notice that there are six of them for four electrolyzers. So if we look at the uh, electro electrolyzers productions, oxygen productions, we can see that it produces 888 gram per second which is about 3 kg 0.5 kilograms per second and these gas, gas pumps are only able to gather 500 grams per second each so all together that means that they can gather 3 kilograms per second which is a little bit less than 3 kilograms and a half but what's gonna happen is that the electrolyzer from time to, from time, to time is going to get over pressure because it just releases its gases and it didn't have time to stabilize in the room so it is not going to be 100% of the time active and we can see it here in the properties that the last cycle was 80% and over the last five last cycle uh, it was 83% so I guess that's the reason why only six gas pumps uh, are enough and it works fine just that way. We also have a gas pump at the top which is meant to gather the hydrogen so so the hydrogen production is 112 grams per second for each electrolyzer. So if we multiply that number by 4, we uh, we get less than half a kilogram of hydrogen produced per second. So that means that one gas pump is definitely enough because a gas pump can gather half a kilogram per second. We can also see that we have three atmos sensors. One at the top of the room that is meant for the hydrogen and two at the bottom of the room that are meant for the oxygen. So I set the hydrogen one to above 300 grams and the two at the bottom of the room that are meant for the oxygen at 550 grams. So here it's a bit of trying out what works the best because if we set them too high we might have uh, too much gas in the room and uh, this electrolyzer might not work as much as we can because they will be over pressure so they could be working less than they potentially could. But if it's too low, we might uh, not have a stable. St we might not have stable gases in the room, so the hydrogen might not be high enough, or the oxygen might not be low enough, and it it can it could cause issues. And also, if it's too low, these gas pumps will not gather a lot of gases, and therefore you will waste energy because if you use energy to only pump uh, three grams when you could pump 500 grams, you're going to waste energy. Another point to mention is that these electrolyzers, according to the documentation, output gases at a minimal temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. So that means that even if the water you provide to these electrolyzers is lower than 70 degrees Celsius, it will output oxygen and hydrogen at a temp temperature of 70 degrees Celsius or higher. So if the water goes over 70 degrees Celsius, obviously the gases that it will output will go up as well. But for that reason, there is no much point to spend energy on cooling the water down. And also by default, the water is more expensive to cool, to cool down than uh, gases. So now that we've seen the lower part of this design, the full Rodriguez design, we can look at the upper part of this design. And the upper part has to do with the energy production. So here we can see that we have four hydrogen generators we have one large power transformer and one power transformer and also a smart batteries. So all these uh, hydrogen generators are linked 
connect it to that smart batteries in order to not waste energy and these two power transformers are used in order to connect all the devices and we don't so we don't have circuits that breaks uh, we used a simple wire here so it can handle up to 1000 watt and here we we use a connective wire that can handle up to 2000 watt so that's the reason why here we need a large power transformer and here we need a power transformer is because on the left side we need a wire that supports up to 2000 watts and on the right side a wire that supports up to 1000 watts. A question that would be worth wondering is why do we have a 4 hydrogen generator? Do we need 4 hydrogen generator to support that design? And I think the answer is no. I think we would only need 3 in order to support that design. But we can fit 4 of them so I guess that's the reason why there are 4 of them. But if we look at uh, the production, the energy production, we can see that we have 800 joule multiplied by 4 because we have 4 hydrogen generator which gives us 3200 joule per second. But in terms of, in terms of consumptions, we only need 240 multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and uh, 120 multiplied by 4. So in total, that gives us uh, a consumption of 2000 160 joule per second so we would only need three hydrogen generator because with three hydrogen generator we would have already 2400 joule per second which is enough to enough supply for 2160 joule of consumptions per second this design will produce more hydrogen that it is needed to support it so what do i mean by that i mean that the hydrogen that will be produced by all these electrolyzers will will be able to produce more energy that it is necessary to support all these machines here at the bottom of the design. So the consequence is that you're going to have an excess of hydrogen and this hydrogen is going to pile up in these pipes and you will need to do something with it. So what you do with it is, is up to you but a common scenario is that you would use it to uh, inject it in extra hydrogen generator that you would connect to your uh, to your grid and therefore you could use it to power more machines in your colony. We're now going to go through the different overlays and we'll start with the power overlay. So there isn't much to say about that overlay. But to start we need uh, we need po power to spin up that, uh, that design because at the beginning we won't have any hydrogen in order to generate power to run the different machines in this design. So we will need power from an external source. It, it doesn't matter what sources but you need uh, power from an external source and inject it in that design and after maybe a cycle or two you can just disconnect it with I, I use the switch here uh, you can just disconnect that external source of power and the full Rodriguez will work uh, completely on its own then the wires inside that designs are pretty basic we use a heavy watt wire to connect the different hydrogen generator as well as the battery and uh, the power transformers. And then we use a connective wire that can handle up to 2000 watt in order to connect all these machines because it has a potential load of 1920 watt. And we use a simple wi uh, wire in order to connect these two electrolyzers which has a potential load of maximum 240 watts. So we only need a wire that can handle up to 1000 watt. The next overlay will be the plumbing overlay and that one is pretty straightforward. You simply need to connect your electrolyzers to your uh, water source. So here I just use the dev pump liquid but in a real game you would need to find water on the map and uh, pump the water from there and connect it to uh, your design, to your uh, full Rodriguez. But that's pretty much it. Another detail to notice in that overlay is the water being delivered through radiant pipe and it has to do with the uh, electrolyzers that output gases at 70 degrees as I mentioned before the minimal temperature the gases will be outputted is at 70 degrees so therefore if if the water is colder you can drop some of that heat in that water and anyway output gases at 70 degrees so that way you can delete heat and reduce the heat of the room and therefore reduce the heat of the gases the next overlay is the ventilation overlay it is pretty straightforward as well we have the gas pump at the bottom of the room that will absorb the uh, oxygen in order to cool it and then reject re inject it in the colony. 
and at the top we have the gas pump that will gather the hydrogen in order to inject it into the hydrogen generator thanks to that gas bridge here and once it has piled up like here we have this gas pipe here that will allow the hydrogen the excess of hydrogen to be used for other purposes usually uh, to generate more power for the rest of your colony so we can notice that these gas pipe are made of uh, radiant gas pipe and it is because the hydrogen here usually would have a uh, a lower temperature than the temperature that is at the top of the room so it will have to cool cool it down because this these machines at the top of the room will create quite a bit of heat so it helps to keep the temp temperature low enough so these machines don't break the last overlay we're going to see is the automation overlay and that one is pretty straightforward as well at the bottom of the room we have two atmo sensors that will enable or disable the gas pumps for the oxygen depending on uh, the pressure of the oxygen in in that area and similarly we have an atmo sensors at the top of the lower part of the room that will uh, enable or disable the gas pump based on the pressure of the hydrogen in that area in the upper part of the room we have hydrogen uh, generators that will be activated or deactivated depending on the, bat the smart battery. If the smart battery is full, they will be disabled, and if the smart battery is empty, they will be enabled, and therefore they will be able to produce power for uh, for the machine in that design. We'll now talk about the limitations of that design that are similar to uh, the Half Rodriguez design, and the first one is basically heat. So all these devices will produce heat. So if you look at the electrolyzers, for example, we can see that it produce 1.25 kdt per second and if we go here at the top we can see that these power transformers produce 1000 dtu per second and this hydrogen generator 4 uh, kdtu per second so these hydrogen generators produce quite a lot of heat so that's why it's going to get uh, quite hotter at the top of the room and uh, this will cause issues one of the consequences of that heat is that your machines could break if they're not made of the right material so you need the materials that will have an overhead temperature high enough so in that case i've used gold almanac and the temperature should never reach over 125 degrees so obviously you can make these uh, machines out of other materials such as steel which means that you would have a, an overhead temperature even higher but if you made these machines with other materials such as copper ore you will have a lower overheat temperature that for copper would be for example 75 degrees and this room is going to get hotter than 75 degrees in that case your machine will start breaking one by one and it's going to cause issues because you need to repair them and change the material as well otherwise it's going to happen again another issue that you'll be facing related to that heat is uh, the, ga the gas temperature so little by little the gases will get hotter and hotter in that room and especially the oxygen which is the gas we care uh, about the most because you will uh, re-inject the, the oxygen back into your colony so we've already seen how to mitigate that issue with the gas pipes uh, that we put here the radiant liquid pipes in order to transfer heat from the gases to uh, the water but it's not going to be enough so you need to find another way to cool this oxygen down before re-injecting it in your colony because if it is at this temperature or even hotter because it's going to get hotter over time what's going to happen your crop will stop growing and uh, your duplicate might even complain if it's really too hot so one way that you can uh, cool down that oxygen is by using uh, anti-entropy thermonullifier that will create cold and you can use radiant pipe in order to transfer that uh, that heat so i'm not going to go into detail in this video because i've already explained this in a previous one but basically you can use this anti-entropy thermonullifier to transfer heat from your Ox gas pipe that contains oxygen into uh, the area here. Another problem you could be facing is that these gas pumps don't absorb the gas that you expect. So, for example, that one could be absorbing oxygen as well, and that one, these ones could be absorbing hydrogen as well. And this could be happening if we, if you don't uh, consume all the gases that it produces. So either you don't consume all the the oxygen or all the hydrogen, and what is going to happen is that the gas is going to pile up here to and here as well is going to pile up and then it's going to destabilize uh, the room so 
the, the gases will not be stable anymore in the room and you start getting a bit of oxygen at the top here or a bit of hydrogen at the bottom here and it's going to start pump mixing the gases and pumping both of them. So one of the problems you're going to have obviously if you if you pump hydrogen you're going to reject hydrogen into your colony and if you pump oxygen here what's going to happen is that you will break these machines, these hydro generators because when you inject a gas that is not hydrogen it it deals damage to these hydrogen generators so eventually you will need to repair them if you inject too much oxygen into them. Let's now talk about the production and if we look at the electrolyzer we can see that it produces 125 gram of hydrogen per second and given that we have four of them we have to multiply that number by four which gives us 448 gram of hydrogen that means that with 448 grams of hydrogen we can produce 3584 watts. We only need 2160 watts to run all the machines in that design, so that includes the gas pumps and the electrolyzers. So that means that we have an excess of 1424 watts that we can use to pour something else in the colony. Regarding the oxygen, the electrolyzer produces 888 grams per second so we have to multiply that number by four because we have four electrolyzers so that gives us uh, the number of 3552 gram per second so these electrolyzers can produce up to 3552 grams per second but that's not going to be the oxygen production because these gas pumps can only uh, pump 500 grams per second per pump so given that we have six of them that means that we can pump maximum 3000 grams or 3 kilograms of oxygen per second. With that oxygen production of 3000 grams per second, we could poten potentially support 30 duplicants, assuming that each duplicant consumes 100 grams of oxygen per second. Obviously, some duplicants will consume more or less depending on the trait and if they have buff or debuff, but it's fair to assume that a duplicant will consume 100 grams of oxygen per second. Unfortunately, these gas pumps will probably not be efficient at 100% of the time, so sometimes they might not be able to uh, absorb the full 500 grams that they can uh, absorb. So for that reason, it's probably safer to go to a lower number than 30, and probably it's safer to go with 29 or 28.